Fellers, welcome everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna need some help from you guys. I want you to, uh, first of all, welcome, especially those that just tuned in. Uh, so as you can tell by the title, we're gonna be ranking Yakuza tropes or cliches or, you know, stuff like that. Now the list, admittedly, I would say you could add a few stuff to it that would make it better. So if you guys have any ideas, and I don't see it here, I'll add it now so that we don't have to uh, do that in the middle of the thing. So, any ideas? Now, one thing I don't see here is scam substories. I'm gonna be adding that. Rubber bullets is just in Yakuza 4, that's it. By trope, we mean stuff like, you know, stuff that happens again and again and again. Or more than uh, you would like. <clears throat> so just name stuff, and again, if they're here, not gonna add them. If they're not here, I'll add them. <clears throat> okay. I see a couple of S tier ones already. Uh, wait, do we have the Toja Clan Escape one? I don't think we do. I don't think we do. So, Toja Clan Escape. Hold on. Toja Clan Escape, Haruka Kidnappings, sure. I feel like that's something we're not gonna see anymore for, you know, obvious reasons, but it is a trope. Huh? <sighs> So, they're not going to be fancy pictures, mind you, but, you know. Um, unnecessary death. That's a good one. So, wait, I'm still in the process of making the first one. Uh Now let me just do this. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, wait, what did we agree on again? There was something at the very beginning. Oh yeah, Toja Clan Escape. Let's add that. And someone said another one. Oh yeah, Haruka Kidnappings. Should we add... I don't know if anyone said this, but should we add damsel scene? Because I feel like that's a thing as well. <laughs> There's quite a few of them. Damsel scene. Uh, What about... Dead cactus... Com uh, th that's in the list already. So, there was something else. عليكم السلام هلا صباح النور حبيبي شو اخبارك um carry you miraculously surviving or how about this plot armor i don't think that's in yeah i don't think i see it cuz yeah the plot armor sometimes is Yo, thank you for the Hania upgrade hyper. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Wait a fucking minute. Four, five, six. Huh. The cutscene gun thing is in here already. Wait, where was it again? Oh yeah, there we go. 
thank you for the five months. TF2 God, thank you, thank you. When is the Yakuza tier list tier list? We need that too. So wait, Millennium Tower, is that in here? Yes, it is, it is. Millennium Tower is in here. Uh, I cure you dying at the end of every game. <laughs> Okay, um... The shirtless thing is already in here. How about this? I have an idea. Villain Redemption. Because sometimes I feel like they kind of reach a little bit. Like, let bad guys stay bad guys, you know? Sawa Sensei... I <laughs> If it's something related to just one game, it's not a trope. We can't add it. So think of something that happens again and again and again. Um, Villain Redemption dies instantly, yeah. <laughs> um, cure you and having to go back to Kamurocho or the Tojo. Let's add that. Sai was saying Baba. Cabaret Club trope. Hmm. I just started judgment. I don't want lost judgment spoilers. I'll try, but I can't control chat. Um archive thirteen. Die okay, yeah, hold on. Let me add that. Okay, gun Daigo. What else do we have? Beam always being the secret weapon shop. Well, they do introduce others, but yeah, I do, I do see what you mean. Mm. Daigo being useless. Oh, don't worry, that's already on the list. Villain is not... Yeah, that, the villain one is in here. Jail time skip. Yeah, sure, that's a good one. That's a very good one. <laughs> that happens at least, what, three times? Let's add that here. Evil Fathers. That's in already. It's called Daddy Issues. <laughs> and oh boy, I can't wait till we get to that one. Yo, Sir Darken. Saijima goes to prison. Let's add that. <laughs> uh, here we go. Damn, we're actually coming up with a lot of these. I love it. I think the villain monologue is in here somewhere. Wait. Villain... No, no, it's not. There we go. Villain monologue. Everyone is Korean. That's a Yakuza 2 thing. I can't add it. Orphanage being threatened. Yeah, that's a good one. Heck, even Gaiden is giving into that now. <laughs> What's the background music? Yakuza 1 hideout theme. Oh, sad substory music. That's a... How... God, how did I forget that? How dare I, dude? There we go. We have 17 additions already. There's like... 30 on the list? What else? Uh, by the way, if you're thinking of reused assets, that's already in. So, th there's a lot that goes in some topics, like, you know, reused assets. Um... Can I move set? <laughs> 
the mandatory arena fight. Gonna add that. Oh my god, 18. Uh, what else do we have? Almost everything related to turning one's back or cutscene guns, it's all in the list, so we can rule all of those out. Yo, welcome, welcome. People never recognizing Kiryu. Perf, sub-stories. God, there's so much, isn't there? <laughs> okay, hold on, let me get typing. Nineteen scam sub stories added. That's the first thing that I added. What will this live be about? We're gonna rank uh, Yakuza cliches. Scams added. Kiryu never kills. Yeah, let's add that actually. Huh. <laughs> We're gonna be here all day listing things. That is actually true. I need to stop at some point. Yeah, chat is flooding. Vil the villain thing, I think, is here already. Or uh, I just made it actually, not too long ago. Um. Mm, Sainjima going to jail. We added that. <laughs> Six hours stream tonight. And th this is not the last stream, by the way. So there's going to be a total of like three streams. This is the second one. And in about nine hours from now, RGG is going to have a stream. So we're going to co-stream that. Limited now it's a stream. Lemon Camel list. Majima fight. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a trope, all right. Da -da 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 Police being useless. <laughs> they keep piling up. Date watching over Haruka. Yeah, RGG is gonna have a stream. Uh, I don't know what's gonna be about. Probably more news for Gaiden and Eight, but yeah. Characters disappearing. No, let's add that. Twenty-three. Men in black trope. Um Here is a trope. Well it's it's a very new trope, but uh Bartender trope. What do we think of that? <laughs> God, God, just watch it actually become a regular thing. Watch. Um... Let me adjust this. Okay, these, again, these are not perfect entry images, but I'm doing the best as I can, and, uh... Uh... Characters coming back to life, we did that. Shirtless, uh, characters, we did that. Perf sub-stories, um... Sad substory music, we add it. <laughs> uh, 
Daigo with a gun. We added that. Carry you coming back. We basically added that. Um, tower, we had that. Look at chat going in. Mm. Oh yeah, animal fights. That's a good one. Twenty-five. Okay, I feel like we have to draw the line somewhere. We have a lot of entries I need to add. Mm, reuse soundtracks. There's not many notable examples. Ghost substories are in. Or ghosts in general. Yeah, I think we have enough, honestly. We're gonna, like... I feel like we're gonna talk a lot about these. So, let me just add these, and... Twenty-five entries, besides the one in the list. Twenty-five! Twenty-five! Alright, uh, give me a second here. Now, let me just have this on loop, very quietly. So it doesn't even get annoying. Hopefully. Uh... Okay. Here we go. Alright, everybody. We've done enough setting up. Now is the time to get down to business. Uh, I'm gonna leave the link to this in the description after this. I forgot to do that now. But I don't think these are gonna be added because I added these. Uh, but yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Shall we? There's a lot. We're gonna talk a lot about these. Just watch. Like, we're gonna debate. No, Leon, you're wrong. Fuck you and your opinion. No, you random person in chat. Fuck you. Okay. Fallen into a coma. How many examples do we have of this? So we have Daigo. We have... The bartender in Like a Dragon. Uh... I guess Yumi? In one... Oh yeah, Haruka. Yeah, true. Uh, Makoto. I mean... I don't really care about it. Like, it doesn't happen enough for me to really... Like, make a fuss over it. I don't know about you guys. What about you? Nakahara. Right. Hospitalized. Yeah. Yeah, that, like, as it is, falling into a coma, it's okay. Yeah, sad substar music is in here. There it is. Anyway, ghosts. I love this shit. As a horror fan... Wait, where's the music? Dude, why is it stuck? Wait. There we go, that's more like it. Right, so, ghosts. I love this shit. I'm a big horror fan. And ghost substories in general just they stand out right because usually you have like say for example a game has a hundred sub stories one of those is going to be a ghost sub story just one and um how good they are is up for debate but i love this i love this trope um i think my favorite one might be the one in seven what's it called forget me not it's a very very good one i love that one forget me not uh, the videotape in Kiwami 2 is okay, or 2, in general. It's okay. Um, you have the graveyard one in Yakuza 6, which is okay as well. Uh, oh yeah, the one in Yakuza 5 with Akiyama. I love that one. That one is really good too. I love that one. Uh, Judgment Haunted Apartment. That that one is in the middle, because like, yeah, she she's like Sadako, but also she's not actually a ghost. 
But yeah, Ghost, sub-stories, everything about Ghost, I love those so much. Just, you know, I want to see more of them. Not just Ghosts, honestly, supernatural stuff. Um, Pirates and Six, yeah, there's there's quite a bit of them. Oh yeah, the, the Yakuza Zero videotape woman, oh, that, that one gives you the chills, I love it. Anyway, yeah, this is where this belongs. Um... Aliens. Yeah, we could have added aliens, actually. Aliens would probably go to love as well. I love stuff like that. Um, anyway, helicopter assault. Now, we have one... I don't know if it counts stuff like Date and Sudo in one, but you have the one that happens in three, where someone dies. And then you have Yakuza 6 at the Millennium Tower. And then... I think that's it. Uh, you have Dead Souls, technically, but it's not really an assault. Um, yeah, like, I don't feel any particular way about these. I feel like a lot of it, a lot of these are going to go with two indifferent. Um, soon, Yakuza 8. Is the car chase here? Oh man, that would have been good to rank. Face change. <laughs> I mean... I guess it depends. Like, I don't hate face changes. Uh, most of the time when it happens, it's because one actor got disgraced somehow. Like, you know, involved in a scandal. The most inf infamous example is Tanimura. In Yakuza 4. Uh, which, he turned out... Like, he, he was accused of a crime. Like, I think, drug possession. Turned out he was innocent. Someone just wanted to see him being brought down, unfortunately. Um, I don't mind it. Like, I don't even have a preference over new Tanimura or old Tanimura. In my opinion, they both do the job very well. I don't... In my opinion, again, I don't think any of them do... Do it, like, particularly better than the other. They both nail it, and, you know, th that's fine. And then you have an example with Hamura in Judgment. He also got accused of drug possession, though I think this time it's actually true. So they changed his face. Um, right. Face changes don't always happen because of controversies. Um, for example, you have the Ishin example in... Um, well, you know, Ishin Kiwami. And then I'm trying to think of something else. I guess if you really want to go into it, you can count stuff like... Between the Yakuza 2 and Kiwami 2, they added a few actors. Um, for some story characters. And then, uh, what else do you have? A very obscure example, Yakuza 3 hostesses. Oh yeah, Laogui. That's a good example too. Laogui. Um, the Chinese version changes him to a Hong Kong actor. And that was pretty cool. So, in my opinion, a lot of the time, it can be pretty cool. The, the changes in Ishin, like, I'm indifferent about them for the most part. Seeing, just, you know, seeing the, some characters who were not in the original being brought in Kiwami. It was nice, but it wasn't, like, crazy cool or anything like that. Would Yagami count? I don't know. I don't think they were intending to use the original Yagami. Uh-uh. <clears throat> Takashima, yeah, that, that's that's exa an example that a lot of people talk about. Hamura's case, he only asked for its price. Oh, really? I didn't look into that. That's interesting. New Hamura is better. A lot of people have been saying that, yeah. Which is interesting. Usually you see people preferring the older face model. Uh, I think Han Peita being Shibisawa made his role in the story far too obvious. Here's an ex- Okay, here's a, a question about Ishin Kiwami. Say, for example... Ah, oh God. Say, for example, what's his name again? The leader of the Shinsengumi, what's his name? Kondo? What if they made him Shibisawa, for example? So that they kind of throw you off. Do you think that would have been better? Or just someone else, like someone that's not, you know, Takechi. 
Because I think one of the main problems people have with the phase changes in Ishin Kiwami is that, you know... Well, a lot of people think the characters don't fit. The, the new faces don't fit the characters. But then, I feel like unpredictable implementations would actually be good. Because, I don't know, like, you, you don't see it coming, you know what I mean? But, I don't know. I didn't think too much about this. Maybe it's gonna not pan out well. Uh... The white heresy. <laughs> uh. Right. Okay, well, we spent quite a bit of time on this one. Let's move on to another one. Uh, daddy issues. Oh, that's a big one, isn't it? Almost every single game has daddy issues. Uh, let's see. Shibusawa definitely had daddy issues. Nishiki had daddy issues. Ryuji had daddy issues. Mina has daddy issues. You could argue the villains of 4 didn't. Like, not, not a single one of them. Yakuza... F Aizawa had daddy issues. Uh, every single villain onwards had daddy issues. Like, Yakuza 4 is like the only game where it wasn't about that. It's almost in every single game. Like, it's insane. Oh yeah, Kiryu definitely had daddy issues. Like, yeah, like, there's so many characters you could f fit under this uh, category. And I don't think it's particularly noticeable. Except with the villains, though. Because, like, you know, when it comes to villains, you're like, oh... This guy didn't like his father figure. Oh, where, where, where else did we see that? I don't know. Yakuza 2. He didn't like his father figure. You know what I mean? Does Jimmy count? Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> Jimmy. God damn it. Yakuza 6 was all about daddy issues. True. Um, Like, it's actually... like. Now that we're talking about it, it's insane how many characters have daddy issues. Tiny Moro technically did. Ichiban. So many characters, like, way too many to name. Yeah, everyone has daddy issues, someone just said. What the fuck? <laughs> the florist, oh my god. Yeah, sun issues with the florist. Yagami as well. Kaito, a bit. A bit. Yeah, like, I don't mind it. I don't think it makes or breaks a story. But... I feel like it, it definitely is happening a lot, though. And I don't... It, it's... It's such a general thing. I, like, I don't want to make it out to be a bad thing because, you know... It's... Scattered throughout the whole franchise in different shapes and forms, right? I don't think it's a bad thing. But... You have... How do I put... Like, it's a very personal thing. Sometimes you don't care for it. Sometimes you're like, oh yeah, that's a compelling story. For example, let's say chat... Let's talk about Nishki for a little bit, okay? I think Nishki is a good example of a daddy issues plotline because... Holy shit, Kazuma neglected Nishki so fucking hard. Like, I don't think we saw a single cutscene. Of um, Kazuma interacting with uh, Nishiki. Or at least, you know, not in a personal, like, close way. Definitely not like Kiryu. Um, and given that fact, and given that... Um, like, just everyone shat on, uh, like, shat on him. Just... You kind of understand why he turned out the way he did. So, that's an example of a good daddy issue plotline. But then you have... I don't know. Let's take Shibusawa, for example. In my opinion, his story is understandable enough, but it's like... It's just very bland, in my opinion. Oh, my, my dad was a politician. But others, like, bullied him. <sighs> <laughs> we, 
We never see them interact. Yeah. <laughs> Nishki sniping Fumo was the only point where they interacted. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I guess it depends. This one can sit here. Product placement. Uh, like, I'm not crazy over it, but it's cool. What do we think about this one? Like, going into Don Quixote and seeing, like, Pepsi or Mountain Dew. It's nice. Gatorade, yeah. <laughs> um, what else do we have? Oh, yeah, 8 has Uber Eats, true. Or a ripoff of it, I'm not sure. Yeah, cool for immersion. It's it's just there to be cool. Like, you know, they're like, oh, I recognize this. This is cool. Boss Coffee, yeah. That's a very... Uh, uh, or a commonly recurring one. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Shintaro did interact with them at the orphanage. That's the thing, though. He does, but we see one cutscene of it. We don't see a cutscene of Puma and Nishiki interacting with each other and, like, you know, I believe in you, son. Or something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah? I don't think the product placement is something people have a problem with. I mean... Does anyone in chat have a problem with the product placement? Anybody at all? Oh, I can't fucking stand Pepsi. How could they add it? No. <laughs> Alright. Torture scene. <laughs> I mean... I don't I feel, I feel like a lot of these are just like... You know, it happens, but like... I guess if you're into... Briona or something, then you're gonna love this, but... Indifferent, really. Or... No, wait, wait. Okay, I'm gonna put this in like, but not for the reason you think, okay? I don't... I don't have a thing for seeing people get hurt, but... Um, having a scene like... Yeah, the one in... Um, God, I don't want to say Judgment Spoilers, because someone earlier said they are playing that game. But, usually, torture scenes add this tension to the story, right? And, you know, how good they are depends on the scene in question, but... More often than not, I think they're pretty cool. Um, now, in Yakuza's case, they really don't mean anything. That's the problem, so... I kind of want to add a dislike between depends and hate, because hate is a strong word. Depends, I guess? <laughs> Generally speaking, I like it. But sometimes, you know... Yeah, they use it emotionally, that's fair, yeah, they do. Um, I guess I can chill here. Enemy turned ally. Or enemy now ally. I like this one. Is there a bad example? I'm trying to think. More often than not, I really love this. <laughs> I mean, the picture example, Rikia, pretty damn good. Um, trust issues, fair enough. And then you have Kiryu with Oda and Tachibano. Um, you have... Would you count Majima and Sagawa? Like, ta he becomes an ally of sorts, but also, like, not really. I like it. Not crazy over it, but... It can be really cool. Oh yeah, Nagumo. Yeah, Nagumo's a very good example. I like it. Nagumo... An exa- wait, what was it? What was his name again? Takasuki. Dude. Probably the best example. Maybe. I don't know. But I love Takasuki so much. Hamazaki's an example too, yes. Lee. Yeah, I guess, like... I don't think there's an example that I hate. So, I guess this can go to love. <clears throat> I would not count Sagawa. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I guess th this can chill at love. Sagira is an example, yeah. 
Yo, Red Carp, welcome. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, chat. Be honest. Where would you put this one? Would Watase count? I guess so. Because, yeah, at first you think he's an enemy, but he's not. <laughs> okay, now, where, where, where did we put this one? Hate. Depends. Love? Oh, look at all the hate in chat. <laughs> hate. 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 Depends. Hate. I was alive the whole time. <laughs> okay. What's a death read can you love? Let's talk about that. And what's a death read can you hate? Absolutely hate. Ratcon is recap. Ratcon is rewriting, basically. So, someone you think died, they didn't die, they just... They decided... They changed their mind. And now they're not dead. <clears throat> love the future, Mine, Ratcon. Kashiwagi, love... Love and hate Kashiwagi. Oh, wait, Tirada. Well, no, I wouldn't count Tirada. Like, that. that's... That's part of the story. Uh... It's a... Uh, I despise the Tirada fake death. I th wait, I think the fake death has another slot here. No, that that's a bit different, I guess. <clears throat> Andre... Yeah, the Andre retcon is very questionable. A lot of people are talking about it. Or, well, we're talking about it. So, I'm gonna talk about my personal... Um, preferences. Kashiwagi, I mean... It's okay, I don't mind it. Kind of indifferent about it. Um, Lao Kalong, whatever. Like, he's a very, very minor character. Jungi Han, I don't think that's... Okay, Jungi's case. Do we, do we do that in Death Redcon or Body Devil? It's not the same person, so... Body Devil, right? I'll just, I'll just put that in their Body Devil. Um... I think so far I'm okay with the death read cons, but I really, really want them to be careful with this because this is a surefire way to piss people off, um, and for good reason. Them read conning deaths just takes away so much tension from the most tense moments in the series. Um, like you know, all all the all the build up, all the feels, everything is just like it's gone. And because that's gone, for future instances, you're like, oh, you know, he might be shot now and he might be gone, but he'll come back later. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I really hope they don't get too comfortable with it. Um, I'm going to put this in Depends, but it's like in the middle of Hate and Depends. <sighs> and I think that's a good place for it. Ryuji being dead didn't make sense to me. He was just weaker, I guess. Didn't take the bullets well. But hey, he came back for Dead Souls. He was amazing in Dead Souls. Dead Souls Ryuji is unironically my favorite Ryuji. Um, and I don't count Ryuji here, by the way. At least not in the same wavelength, because it's, an, it's a non-canon game. It's just like... It's a very, very separate spin-off. <clears throat> but yeah, anyway... Crotch shot. Acid reuse. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, for the most part, I don't mind it. But, okay, let's talk about this. Can you think of any acid reuse that you absolutely hate or don't like? The only example that I don't like is like, you know, Kaito, for example. He just has Kiryu's brawler moveset and the beast moveset. Oh, let's sprinkle, like, three new moves and call it a day. Like, th that's probably my least favorite part about Acid Reuse. Kanai moves. I forgot about that. <laughs> Move set reuses. Yeah, fair enough. I can get why people hate those. We skip in crotch shot. What are you talking about? It's in love tier. Enough said. That's it. That's all you need to say. 
Um, one example that, well, I, I think this is just me, really, but a lot of the games, especially 3, 4, 5, I think, they have certain stuff returning, like pole, bowling, uh, darts, and all that. And they don't change. Like, they're, they're just the same thing. Which, you know, it makes sense they would reuse those, because why would you get rid of them? But also, like, it's just meh to me. But then again, a lot of mini games I just don't really like. Um, if you ask me for my list of, like, liked mini games, that's very little, I think, compared to most people. <clears throat> But yeah, I guess, for the most part, I'm indifferent about this. I don't mind it. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I saw the cameo. Okay, anyway. Celebrity cameo. Um. You know, before Yakuza 8, I would have put this in indifferent. But seeing Danny Trejo <laughs> show up... I'm gonna... I'm gonna put this here. I feel like now, like, you know, we're getting more and more chances of just all kinds of actors to show up. Yeah, Miracle Johnson was cool. I count all face models here, by the way. But, you know, maybe that's just me. I just, you know, generally speaking, it's cool. Um, and yeah, that's really all there is to it. Uh, can't wait... Like, man, I can't wait to see how Danny's gonna play out and, um... What was the other actor's name? I forgot it. But just, you know, seeing actors from outside of Japan, you know, outside of Asia in general, um, make an appearance is really, really good. Dr. Han, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Daniel Daykim, thank you. Yeah, I can't wait to see John Cena either. Do you guys remember the hashtag John Cena for Yakuza 8? Yeah, I don't forget that. Maybe we can change it to John Cena for Yakuza 9 now. Anyway. Human Shield. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing. Like, you know, in particular. It's okay. But... I don't, I like, I don't know. Maybe it gets funny sometimes because, like, one character gets in front of someone and then... Guess what? A second character gets in front of the character that got in front of someone. And it's kind of... It's a little funny, but like, I don't really mind it. Hate. <laughs> it's okay. I think Human Shield is just a bit boring now, yeah. Shout out to the Yasko Shield uh, cutscene in Yakuza 4. One of the best, for real. <clears throat> Um, okay, last minute fake out. I think this is a good spot for it. Oh, guys, Kiryu's gonna die. Kiryu's never gonna come back. Look at him. He's The poor guy has been stabbed. Oh, it's the end of Kiryu. No, it's not. I can't really like this one because, like... <laughs> they want to make this tension at the very end. And what do they do? They just... Do something like this, like, oh, Kiryu got stabbed, will he die? Literally after the credits, you see him fine. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> um, what other notorious example can you think of? Um, I don't know how Kiryu's organs were still functioning that long, yeah. Oh yeah, the bomb! Oh my god, the bomb at the end of two. <laughs> Kiryu! You trust me this time, please. Starts bomb. And then... <laughs> it's all a prank, bro. There's no bomb. The bomb at the end of Yakuza 1. Yeah, well... Yeah, th that, that's, that's gonna remain a question. For all of history. <clears throat> Fives is bad. Makeout session. Oh, yeah, Akiyama with the bill. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Akiyama, son! Akiyama! Kaso! God. 
I want, honestly, I, I don't even mind this one so much. I just wanted to put it here because I feel like something has to go here. But, you know, in general, I don't like when they do fake out. So I guess this is fitting. Anyway, horny minigame. <laughs> okay, I think most of chat would probably put this in love, right? Well... Okay, let, let's be honest, chat. A lot of the horny minigames are not even fun to play. Do we count... No, wait, the Cabaret Club is somewhere here, right? Yeah, it is. Um, biggest example. Japan... What was it called again? Japan Cat Catfight Club? No, JCC... What, yeah, Japan Catfight Club. God, I fucking despise it so much. <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> like... It's RNG the game. Like, I, I don't get how anyone enjoys that. Um... Horny games are the definition of indifferent. Ping pong. <laughs> I don't know, man. If you ask me, if I wanted... If I wanted... Listen, if I wanted to see... <laughs> if I wanted to see boobas or wieners, the internet says it's free real estate, okay? This does not do it for me. I'm sorry, but... It's just... It's... No. Okay. Cliche romance. Um... I want to make a dislike tier, honestly. I don't mind romances, for the most part. But, um... <laughs> hate. Hate. Goddamn. <laughs> okay, the best romance I think most people agree is Majima and Makoto, right? Which is funny, because... I don't think either of them thought of it as a romance. Maybe Majima did. But Makoto was like, oh, thank you. Um, which, it's just, like, it's a tragic case of cliche romance. Now, the whole thing between Yumi and Kiryu, uh, it didn't really go anywhere. Kaoru and Kiryu didn't go anywhere. Mayumi and Kiryu didn't go <laughs> anywhere, so... I'm not a fan, honestly. Um, by the way... I put this in hate, but, like, don't take it too harshly, because there's no in-between here. So, I, I would just put it here. <clears throat> yeah, remember Mayumi? Kaito and Mikiko. Yeah, they were okay. They're, like, they... Kaito and Mikiko and Makoto and Majima were probably the best examples. But, I don't know. Again, I urge people, don't take these placements too seriously. Just because I put something in here doesn't mean, like, just listen. <laughs> I'm doing this for fun. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> um, Haruka and Yuto. <laughs> I think most of chat doesn't like that one. Hoshino and Saori are good. Yeah. <clears throat> Yagami and five girlfriends. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, everyone in chat loves that. Saejima in prison. Okay, now you're convincing me to put this a bit up. No, I'm just gonna put here. Anyway, the true mastermind. I'm stuck between this and this. I don't mind it, but a lot of the time it's like, oh... You thought this idiot was the mastermind? Psych! It's me! Um, which... Sometimes works. Other times, it's just like... <laughs> really? Who the fuck are you? Um... For example... Yakuza 2... It, like... That's probably one of my least favorite examples. I just... It's, it's meme material. It's literally meme material. Go back and watch the cutscene. Oh, guys! How you doing? See this pistol? I'm gonna shoot everyone in the fucking room. <laughs> fucking proceeds to shoot Tirada, shoots... Uh, Jin, shoots... Like, Kiryu shoots Goda. 
Goda gets up, shoots the <laughs> villain. It's just like a big meme. Oh yeah, Yaka's a 5 as well. Like, I guess it goes to depends. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Like, for ex th this was not in 3. We already knew that Mine was like the, the top dog. Uh, same for Nishiki. As for, I mean, Yakuza 4 doesn't really have a good example either. It's just Munakata. Well, I mean, there's multiple people in Yakuza 4. Like, there's, you know, Arai thinks he's pot shit at first and then. <laughs> Most of the time, I find myself just not really being a fan. This public security and Kiwana count. Kiwana, maybe. Kiwana, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate, you might see me put something in hate right now, and you're like, oh, I guess he hates all, every single example of True Mastermind. But no, that's not true. Like someone just said, Kiwana is a very good example of a True Mastermind. Or Kuroiwa. Oh, shit. <laughs> I just remembered that someone didn't want me to spoil judgment for them, but... I'm sorry. I'm, it's it's hard, okay? <sighs> oh boy, here it comes. Listen, chat. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, right? I'm not here to say, like, oh, this is worse, this is not worse, but... At the end of the day, th this... This ranking is just me. You might put something higher or lower, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I just want to reiterate that before you go. Fuck you, Leon. <laughs> like, we had people thinking Kuroiwa is not the mastermind for some- uh, for- for example. Which, in a- in a way, it is true, yeah. Like, th th there's so many variables that go into this. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, generally speaking, let me just put this in depends. <laughs> just put major spoilers in the title. We could do that, yeah. There we go. Okay, high-tech physics scene. I don't think anyone hates this. Bread physics, probably the most impressive one. Um, I can't think of any other one. Do we have another impressive physics scene? I can't, I'm not sure. But yeah, people love to see stuff like this, so goes to love. Okay, body double. Um... This depends for me. In my opinion, a case like Junki Han makes sense. A crime boss would probably have a body double. But, um... The Kazuki and Kazuki example is a bit goofy. <laughs> um, do we have any other examples? I guess if you want to count the... the, um, the fake sub-stories like fake Kiryu and all that. Oh, Joji, yeah, I guess that does fall un under this, too. Um... Uh, Joji was cool, I'll give him that. Um, mirror face, do we put him here, too? I guess we can. I didn't mind mirror face, honestly. Mirror face, too. Oh my god, mirror face, oh god, are we gonna talk about mirror face now? <laughs> There's so many cans of worms with this topic, or, well, with this tier list in general, because it's a whole bunch of stuff that people either really love or really hate, for the most part. Mirror Face is such an MGS character. Um, Andre and Eight might be a body double, or it could be a long-lost twin brother as well. <clears throat> okay, here's, here's why I don't mind it so much. People usually say, okay, imitating appearance is one thing, but being able to imitate the person's voice is a little too much. That's what breaks it for them, right? 
Um, either that or the fact that mirror face just kind of shows up and disappears. Now, for me, I, I look at it this way. If mirror fa like if, if people having a, a crazy superhuman strength in these games is not a problem, then why is a person having superhuman vocal cords a problem? That's one thing. And then for the whole, like, oh, he just disappears. Like he's a convenient plot device. Sure, I'll give you that. But what do you want him to do? He's a criminal. Of course he's going to just run away. That's how I look at it. Um, like, the problem with discussing Yakuza things is I see this happen all the time. People give the benefit of the doubt for something unrealistic, and then with something else, for some reason, they're like, oh, this is not realistic. Why should we like this? I see this happen a lot. And, you know, no hate to anyone, of course, this is just all of us talking and discussing and just having fun with all of these topics, but, um, you know, if you want to give the benefit of the doubt to something, then maybe try to give something else a chance. <clears throat> um... Yeah, there's, there's spoilers here, for those wondering. I changed the title, it should say that now. <clears throat> Some of them are reaching. Well, welcome to Yakuza, where reaching happens all the time. Um, I don't know, I, I like the idea of like a super ma like master of this guy's assassin. Suspension of disbelief. Um... <laughs> If we're gonna talk unrealistic, we gotta bring up Hangman. Just, look, like, if, if we try to sit down and, like, you know, talk about every single realistic or non-realistic thing, we're gonna be here all day long. There's a lot of bullshit in these games. I think the sooner we all accept that, the better. And it's nothing new. Uh, it's just more so that, you know, as time went on, you could argue bullshit became more, more and more commonplace. Common. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyway, anyway, tattoo reveal. I think everybody loves this, generally speaking. Um, there's really, like, who's gonna put this here? <laughs> you know? Pretty cool trope. We get to know more about the characters for the most part. Um, nothing much to say about this. Okay, new set in a game plan. <laughs> I like it, it's funny sometimes. Uh, the whole, like, cliche power is friendship uh, plan with all with these four was kind of amusing to see. Same thing in Yakuza 5. And then I think there was a bit of a scene like this in Yakuza 3 with Kiryu, Date, Majima. But that's not at the very end. It's almost close to the end. I think it's where Kiryu says he's gonna go back to Okinawa. Majima says he's gonna, like, hold the fort here. Something like that. I think they're cool. And I think you have a lot of these in the Yakuza 2 as well. Where they rendezvous at uh, New Serena and then talk things out. Yeah, they're, they're, it's nice. Rocket launcher. I guess I like it. I mean, how many times did this happen? Yakuza 6, and then... More than... Yeah, more than once in Yakuza 6, actually. But... Can anyone think of another game? Five. Right. Apparently it happened in five. Yakuza Zero. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you're right, you're right. One random goon in the car chase. I mean... I'm indifferent, like, we don't really... It doesn't stand out, in my opinion. Millennium Tower. <laughs> Would anyone put this here? I think the Millennium Tower, generally speaking, gives gives us a good time. Like, fights on top of this building is like... It, it's a serious staple at this point. It's a classic, yeah. <laughs> um, usually what happens on top of here is like a huge like fight. Usually final boss. Not always, though. Yakuza 7, you have like a whole dungeon here. Yeah, and then Yakuza 6, you go through the tower. Just, generally speaking, almost always a good time. Callback reference. I'm assuming this means, like, 
character cameos or characters returning? Maybe? <clears throat> or am I misunderstanding this? Callback reference. Yeah, for me it depends as well. Um, it can be really cool. For example, uh, the certain cameo on Lost Judgment, the story one, is really cool. But then... Okay, am I the only one in this? I'm sick and tired of the Obitarian showing up for the tenth time. Please, just... Just... Stay in Yakuza 0, please. I've had enough. Uh, is this how Majima and Kiryu feel when they see her? Um... I, like, I, I'm just... I'm done. Like, please. <laughs> Leave her alone, Leon. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm sorry. I just... I can't. I can't anymore. So the Obitarian... Pocket Circuit Fighter is okay. Like, you know, his storyline is pretty funny. I don't mind that. Um, What else do we have? <laughs> How is she still alive? No one knows. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples. For some reason, I can't think of any. Oh yeah, Yuya and Yakuza 5, yeah. In uh, the Black Panther games as well. Yeah, there are cases that are really, really good. Like that. Onomichio, yeah, not bad. Um, yeah, there's a lot of characters. What is callback? Basically cameo, uh, cameos, like returning characters from other games. Ryuji, Shinji, and Daigo and Yakuza 0. Just all around cool stuff. So yeah, for the most part, I like this. But there's a couple examples that I'm just like, please, drop it. Please, like, give us new characters. Um, okay. Yeah, the cameos on Lost Judgment are included, of course. <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> Kiryu, the, the, the secret of Onomichi is... Is... Boom! <laughs> Like, I'm gonna put this in hate, but I don't particularly, like, I, I don't feel strong about this. It's just funny to me. Like, it's so obvious. Well, once you see that dash at the end of the sentence, yeah, you, you know that person is getting shot. Or maybe, like, okay, maybe not shot, but, like, something is gonna interrupt. Usually gunshots. Usually. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it's... Okay, if you were the localizer, one of the localizers, or, like, someone on the dev team, how would you fix this? I feel like it's difficult. Because, okay, take the dash away. The sentence is not going to be complete, so maybe some people won't see it coming, but also... I don't know. Replace the dash with dot dot dot. But I feel like if they do that... We're gonna get used to the dot dot dot, and then the dot 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 is gonna become the meme. You know? <clears throat> I would make it so that when the gunshot happens, the dash disappears. Hmm. The issue is that the trope in itself is a thing for written... ...writing in different mediums as well. Yeah, I can see it happening. But yeah, I'm just gonna leave it here. Uh... It's... Again, I don't know how they would fix this. But it's just funny. Um, y like, you can see the death coming from a mile away. Um, Daigo incompetence. Okay. Daigo gets more hate than he deserves. Don't at me. Uh, you know, at a certain point... Daigo being incompetent was such a huge <laughs> meme. And I'm talking about, like, pre Yakuza 0. Everyone and their moms, m like, meme on Daigo being so bad at his job. Until some people in the community pointed out that, wait, Daigo didn't ask for this. Kiryu pushed this onto him and then just fucking, f like, walked out of the, 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 the whole scene. Um, and then after that, I I've been seeing more and more people acknowledge that and, like, joke about it. Because, I, like, 
Daigo's doing his best. He never, like, he didn't want this life, but it was kind of just pushed onto him. And he took it um, upon himself to live up to Kiri's expectations. And the expectations of other characters as well. Um, everyone is incompetent at this point. Kiri does so much dumb shit. Preach! Preach. Man. <clears throat> Daigo's the best chairman the Tojo has ever had. The best thing he did... The Tojo is no more. And... That means Kiryu doesn't have to return to the Tojo clan anymore. See? He was thinking 10 steps ahead. Um... But yeah, I don't re Like... I don't think Daigo is... Like, if you want to rag on Daigo for doing stupid shit... Maybe take a look at Kiryu's track record, because it's not perfect. He does so much stupid shit. One of the funniest things, I mean, this is something everyone knows, but... As soon as he gets the role of chairman thrown onto him, five minutes later... Peace out, idiots! Figure it out amongst yourselves. And then he just goes away. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not blaming him for that. He wants to live his life away from the Tojo, sure. But guess what happens? He gets dragged back into the Tojo for like six games after that. But anyway. Anyway. Everybody does stupid shit in this series. And uh, yeah. Is 5 Daigo an improvement? Or it makes him look more idiotic because he didn't shoot the mastermind? Um. I don't know. So much stupid shit happens in 5, I, I I don't know how to answer that. He does have his moments in 5. But... I don't know. <clears throat> anyway. Shirtless boss fight. I don't think anyone has complaints about this. Unless someone would actually put this here. <laughs> There's a bunch of entries here that just like... How could you put this below love? People play the series for this. <clears throat> Kiryu made Tarada the fifth chairman instead of Kashiwa. Yeah! Yeah, he did. Um, surprisingly ripped. I know this doesn't sit right with a lot of people, but I actually like this. It's funny. Like, did you think this random doctor would <laughs> have, like, all these gains? I don't think anyone did, but... Uh, it's Yakuza. Everyone is ripped at this point. And this is actually one case where they did explain it. Most cases, everybody is ripped for absolutely no reason. They're just ripped. Yeah, Shinada's explained. This guy's explained. But then everyone else is like... Yeah, thank you for bringing up Awano. Aw like, they had a whole thing with Awano mentioning that he kind of just lived the easy life for so long. Um, just to like, you know, keep his hands clean. But he's jacked more than, like, more than Majima. You know? You would think, okay, he might have a beer belly or something, but no. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, I like this. <clears throat> anyway, Death Cradle Monologue. <laughs> oh god, Jin Goda and Yakuza Online. Oh my god. Best. Okay, Death Cradle Monologue. Um, I, I mean, I guess I'm indifferent. I don't mind it. Uh, I can't, like, yeah, like, I don't know. Why would you hate this? It's just the thing. Classic. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I can't think of any example that I hate. It's just, it's there to be there. Like, it's, it's used a little much. A little too much in each game. Hmm. Can we think of an example that's really drawn out? Like, you're just like, Sheesh, dude, just fucking die already. <laughs> I'm trying to think, but... Uh... Oh, yeah. Hirose. He goes on for an awfully long time. <laughs> like, he, he retells a whole story, and then, like, he keeps going on talking about uh, how he has regrets, and then, like... <clears throat> well, 
You could argue about Rikia, but... Uh... Oh yeah, Katsuragi. Saejima's sister, oh my god, yeah, good example. <laughs> Gets shot, turns into an actual superhuman. And then just does everything, and once the job is finished, she just, she falls down. <laughs> anyway, um... Oh shit, yeah, we don't have an info dump. Oh man, I almost, I really want to add that. Let me add it. Hold on, we're gonna get to it like last, because we're gonna add it late, but hold on. Let me add the info dump. Oh my god. Dude, thank you. Thank you. This would have gone without us talking about the amazing info dump that is Tamiya. <laughs> Tommy Moro and Aki had a picture. Yeah, hold on. Trip. <laughs> had a picture of Tamiya. Uh, I love how when everybody thinks of an info dump, they just think of Tamiya. Even though there's worse examples. Okay, so... There we go. Alright. Back in business, baby. Um, okay, so, dropped gun. I don't think anyone likes this. It's so, so, so cheap. How the hell do you not think about this? Oh, this guy, like, burned the whole orphanage. You know, maybe he... he, he I knocked him down. It's good, right? Turns around. Boom! Someone dies. Just... <laughs> this is probably the worst one out of everything here so far. It's just like, come on, dude. And that's not even the wor the worst example. Like, God, Yakuza 4. That rooftop cutscene is infamous. It's like, it's... It deserves its own tier, just because of this. Saejima, you should know better. You knock down this asshole, you punch the ground because he's not worth punching, and then <laughs> you turn around. Like, come on, dude. Really? Sheesh. Um, the one in three with Daigo was unexpected. I oh, will get to that soon. Gun Daigo rescue. See that? <laughs> Yo, thank you for the super chat, Koala. Katsuragi was okay as like a manipulative villain, but yeah, they could have done more with him, I think. Or, you know, he could have gone out in a <laughs> better fashion. <clears throat> um. Oh god, yeah, you guys are mentioning that now. That one cutscene in Judgment, where uh, Yagami disarms Higashi, takes the gun, shoots every bullet in the ceiling, that's... It's almost like a fuck you to all of these uh, cutscene gun cutscenes. Um, and I love it. I love it so much. Majima introduction. Majima fight. I mean... I think people love this, in general. Actually, no, wait. I feel like Ma the Majima fight one should be used, because... They're similar enough. Let's go to Cabaret. I'm gonna put this in Depends. The the storyline for the Cabaret stuff, I don't mind. Thank you, Koala. Thank you, thank you. Uh, was a waste of a good So, the Cabaret Club storylines are, you know, pretty funny. Adorable, just... Wholesome stuff. I don't mind them. But... Um, it is kind of becoming a regular thing, right? Or it did already. So you have the Cabaret in Zero, and then Kiwami 2, and then Lost Paradise. I count that. And I'm not sure about Gaiden or 8. Gaiden is going to have a Cabaret Club, but I don't think it's going to work the same way. It's, uh, generally speaking, it's okay. I like it. Now, mind you, don't mistake this with Hostess Clubs. This is not Hostess Clubs. This is the Cabaret stuff that you manage and, you know. Now, having said that, though, Hostess Maker and Yakuza 3 and 4 can go fuck themselves. I hate those. Uh, girl Boss Down. What is this supposed to mean? Actually, I have no idea. Can anyone explain this? 
Yeah, there's an RGG showcase um, in about eight hours. A bit less than eight hours. Um, I have no idea what this means. I would rank it, but... The cool girl is sidelined. Do we have... Hmm... Female important character dies or gets very wounded. I can't think of much, honestly. Like... Oh, Reina. Okay, Re yeah, Reina is an example. Yasuko, Reina. You... Uh, yeah, okay. I mean... It's just meh. I guess I'll put it in depends. <clears throat> um... Park. Oh no. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it depends. I, like... I'll just put it here. Scam sub-stories. I'm honestly sick of these at this point. Like... I get it. Haha. -ha. Scam. Uh... We would like to offer you... A tool that... Wipes your ass every day, free of charge. Like, I'm just done with these. <laughs> Kiwa yeah, Kiwami has an abundance of these. And by proxy, Original One has a lot of these. I think Original One probably had more, even. <clears throat> you broke my arm, pay a million yen. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm just, like, it's... it's... Yeah, they're meme material, but that's about it. So, again, I might put this here, but don't take it as, Oh, Leon hates every single scam substory. It's not like that, but it's just like... I I'm... I don't know. I want to see other stuff for substories. Tojo Escape. Now, usually this is a banger. So you have the one in Yakuza 1. Do you have one in 2? No, in 2 you break into the Tojo. Uh, you have one in... F not five. You have one in... So wait, zero... Zero, one... Just zero and one, right? Other games, generally speaking, have fights in the Tojo, but you don't break out. You're just... You're getting in. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Omi Escape. Yeah, maybe if you want to put that too here. Aruka gets kidnapped. Um, indifferent, I guess. I mean, maybe to some people it gets a bit old, but I think it doesn't happen often enough for for it to really be noticeable and annoying. <clears throat> Yo, Esteban. Damsel in distress. Oh yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, the damsel scene. So, wh what do we have? Mm. Do we count uh, the Reina and Yumi stuff? Y Yumi, maybe. I don't know about Reina, because she disappears and shows up dead. Makoto, yeah. Um... In nearly every game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, I think a couple of scenes that I don't like when it comes to damsel scenes is the stuff with Kaoru. Um, Park. Sh sure? I think the stuff with Kaoru I don't like more. Just because, like, I feel like all the, all the build-up for her does nothing. But you could look at it a different way and say... Oh, she she had she had a moment of weakness, and then people jumped her or something like that. I don't know, but I just don't like the cow scenes <clears throat> with you know stuff like that, with the damsels uh, trope. <sighs> I'm doing homework and I'm tired. Don't want to sleep, but I must finish. If you have time, you can just sleep. But if you don't, finish it now. Psycho. Did Psycho? Psycho is the opposite of a damsel. In almost every way, in my opinion. 
Oh, by the way, speaking of damsel, speaking of damsel, I would argue they turned Mikiko into one as well, which is unfortunate because Mikiko, I think, was written as a character that is similar to Saiko in that, you know, she can hold her own, but I feel like she becomes very much like Kaoru, but that's my opinion on it. <clears throat> Unlike Saiko's sister, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, almost, I think throughout the whole thing, Mikiko doesn't really do much, which is un unfortunate. She just kind of um, shows up with a, like, tragic kind of story, running away from certain people. Um, blame Amnesia, she forgot she was tough. Um... Yeah, I don't know. They probably just wanted a reason for the final cutscene to... Or the final boss to play out the way it does. Anyway. Plot armor. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't like. I don't like at all. So, when we say plot armor... Um... We basically mean every single example of... A cutscene where a character should die, but they don't die. And you almost want them to die, because... It would add some tension and some value to the cutscene. So basically, Kiryu, almost every single time, getting shot or stabbed or whatever, he doesn't die. And, you know, I love Kiryu. He's one of my... He's top for me. Um, him and Majima. But, like, man, just... <laughs> I don't know. Like, do something. They have a fake out in um, the end of 2. They have a fake out in the end of th uh, 3. They have a fake out in the end of 5. They have a fake out in the end of six. Please, just... Just... Take the step. Don't be afraid of it. I guarantee, like, if you do it well, people are gonna love it. Like, yeah, sure, you will have people who hate because, like, oh, my favorite character is gone, but... Like... This and... What was it again? Uh, the, the fake out. Yeah, last minute fake out. These are kind of interchangeable. I hate these. Like... Sometimes you have very reasonable moments for a character to be to die in a decent way, but they don't. Um Okay. Hot take. Yakuza 2 would have been better if Kaoru somehow died. Because that way you don't get the whole fucking America thing. Uh but I guess then you wouldn't have her coming back in aid the way she is. But I mean they could still make her come back in a summon. I mean, dead characters came back in a summon in seven, so. I don't know. I feel like Kaoru just really suffered in two, in terms of writing. Uh, like, all the build-up amounted to nothing. And then, what happens after that? They just write her off. It's just... I'm not saying she should have died because I hate her. Don't mistake it for that. But, death in fiction can have a lot of value. And it makes you appreciate a game even more. But, you know... It is what it is. <clears throat> Anyway, oh, I mean, I guess uh, we did just talk about this, but yeah, hate. Um, a curious summon that has all of his exes. See, that's magnifique. <laughs> yeah, Kiryu might have cancer, but it's not the typical cancer. It's Kiryu cancer. It's special. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, she was a three for one scene. <laughs> okay, villain redemption. Now, this one depends for me. Sometimes it's very good. Like, I think a lot of people will say Mine is a good example for what little redemption he had. Mine, Awano, um, you know, th there's very good examples of this. But usually they die, <laughs> and you know. I think if you, if we add the dying part to this, people would probably put this in hate. But without the dying part, it depends. Uh, Hamazaki, uh, yeah, he, he also dies. Um, Aoki also, yeah, he dies as well. <laughs> Sugiuchi also dies. Nishiki dies. Oh my god. He dies. They die. She dies. 
Uh, Kawa well, Kawana doesn't die, but... <laughs> um... Oh, you know who doesn't die? Uh, Kido. Kido, Arai... I guess Daigo, if you want to put him there. Yeah, Aizawa too. Well, no, wait. He can't say Aizawa redeemed himself. Maybe he kind of, you know, simmered down a little bit, but we, like, didn't even see him talk after the conversation. So I wouldn't include him here. Aoki is barely a redemption. He dies two seconds later. True. At least he does get to talk, unlike Aizawa. Um, Shibasawa, no, that's definitely not a redemption. He's still an asshole. Uh, Katsuya doesn't die, yeah. But most characters die. And, like, I, I don't like that trope. When they die, it's a hate uh, category. But, you know, it can be very nice. Oda. Oda's a complex one. Um, okay, do you guys love Oda's case of redemption, or do you hate it? Do you still hate him after what he did, or...? <clears throat> God, I love Oda's case because it's it's not a clear cut like oh, it's this or it's that. It's just like it's just it's very in the middle. It's pretty good. Like he does fucked up shit, but then he literally gives his life away, which is it's just not the kind of thing you would have a clear cut answer about. Um, but yeah, he human trafficked. Don't like him. Fair enough. Understandable. It is complicated, though. That is for sure. Um. God, I actually want to see more characters like Oda. I think, man, with a series like Yakuza, it would definitely benefit from more characters like that. Because, you know, we should have more characters that are just horrible because they're horrible. Um. So, in that sense, the villain redemption thing... Mm, does Hamazaki count as good? I mean, yeah, he redeemed himself. He still traumatized Haruka, but <laughs> he redeemed himself. Um, yeah, Sawashiro is similar, I guess. Um, but yeah, th th this is a very interesting topic, I love it. The whole redemption thing. There's good examples, but most of them are good examples, but they die. So it, it does amount to something, but... Same, Mobius, same, same. Okay, Kiryu goes back to the Tojo. <laughs> See, I want to put this in hate, but then we wouldn't have Yakuza 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Um... Like, I'm gonna put this in hate, but not like, oh, Leon hates all of these games. I'm gonna put this here because it's just fucking hilarious. Like, oh, I'm gonna leave the Yakuza for good this time. Oh, <laughs> uh, what happens? Oh, Kiryu, please, we need your help. Um, someone stole the 10 billion yen. Okay, I guess I'll go back. I'm putting it on hate for that, if that makes sense. <clears throat> um... Honestly, I almost feel like this doesn't get highlighted enough. Just because, like... When it comes to Ichiban, for example... Now, I know a lot of people love Ichiban, but... For those that didn't get over Ichiban being a new protag, it's like... Think about this for a second. Almost every single game with Kiryu is this. <laughs> yeah, he's in an ab abusive relationship with the Tojo. Now, given this, I, I just really enjoyed Ichiban's story, because it's not really this. It's very different. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna put this here. Gun Daigo. Love. Love, love, love. Um, here's the thing with Ichiban. At first, he wants to get back in. But then all of that is gone. It's different. It's very different, like I said. Ichiban... Like, you know, after the disbanding happens... What he wants to do after that is just, you know... Be with Arakawa. But then, you know, Arakawa dies and all that. So I feel like after that, he just tries to move on from everything. 
We don't really see how yet. We'll see with eight. But I like it. It's different. Um... <laughs> okay. Gun die, go rescue. Now... <laughs> I... I so, I'm gonna put this in love, but don't take it as, oh, Leon loves all the Gun Daigo cutscenes. I mean, I kind of do, but it's mostly because they're, they're hilarious. So you have the one in 2, where uh, after the Shindo fight, he just picks up a gun, shoots someone, uh, shoots uh, Shindo before he shoots uh, whoever. And then in 3, during his coma, he just wakes up, picks up Mine's gun somehow. He knew he, knew he it was there. Shoots all of the Black Monday guys, and then Yakuza. Th Wait, at the beginning of Yakuza Three as well, he almost was gonna get uh, Fuma, but then he didn't. And Yakuza Five, he comes back sharp as ever, shoots like four guys in the span of a second, <laughs> and then saves the day. Mind you, he was no, he yeah, he was hospitalized there too. Um. But he's walking with the help of Katsuya, which is amazing. Uh... <laughs> yeah, Daigo just one-tapping Black Monday and then Kurosawa's gang in 5. It's just amazing. Um... Now, if you, had, if you had to pick the best one, which is the best one? I think the one in 3 is hilarious. It, it might be my favorite. Just rolls over the fucking bed, picks up the gun. <laughs> <laughs> and like with perfect aim too. So for those who don't know, I feel like most people know, but this became a meme so much that people, like, when they talk about Daigo being strong, it's not Daigo, it's Gun Daigo. He's strong as hell with a gun. He's strong on his own, but like, have you seen him with a gun? <laughs> Sheesh. <clears throat> but yeah, the one in five is also great. Um, anyway, jail time skip. I don't mind it. Um, this happens like three times mainly, I think. So you have Ichiban, you have Kiryu and Yakuza 1, and then you have Saijima and Yakuza 4. Maybe 5 a little bit if you want to, I don't know. But mainly in 4, uh, four 25 years. Um... It's a good way to skip time. The one in six. Oh yeah, the, the one in six too. Seemed unnecessary. Um, I don't mind it so much, personally. Like, it, it has its purpose. Sometimes the characters do something. Destruction of public property or whatever, and then they go to prison for that. Um, it's okay. I, I don't think I had a problem with any, really. Okay, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, that's a bit of a lie. Okay, does anyone think... No. Does anyone think the time skip in Yakuza 7 is a bit too big? Ichiban is almost as old as Kiryu. Like... They moved on to a new protag, which is over his 40s. So that one I might argue about a little bit. But also, if we didn't have that time skip... 7 would not be the way it is. 8 would not be the way it is. So I don't know. But yeah, that's like the one example that I might have an issue with. Other than that, though, it's... I don't mind it. <clears throat> Yo, Descendant, thank you for the super chat. If she not have fought Gun Daigo, 5 would have ended very differently. <laughs> yeah. Daigo would have been the person he play as instead of Shinada. For the finale. <clears throat> Um, Ichiban was in prison before Yakuza 1 all the way to after 6. Yeah. Feels like Ichiban is a little too old to start a reboot. Yeah, th that I can definitely understand. Um, but, you know. People don't fucking age in this game series, so I guess it's whatever. We'll see. Unless Ichiban also gets cancer in Yakuza 10. Then it matters. But we'll see. Um, <laughs> Sai Ichiban in prison. Okay, as as you guys know, I absolutely love. No, I love it for the memes. It's hilarious. It, it's it, like 
<laughs> we need to have another game. Uh, thank you, by if the way, again, Gundigo Thank you. Gundigo 5 would have ended very differently. Dude, we need another game where Saejima goes to prison. Please. Keep it going. Keep the trope going. Wouldn't even be mad. Um, it's not a Saejima game if he's not in prison. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. That's about it. It's just funny, like... <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about it, actually. Um... He's always... In how he's always in prison for the weirdest reasons? Yeah, I love it. The funniest part about all of this Saijim in prison is... The way he goes willingly in 5. And then as soon as something goes wrong, he breaks out. <laughs> Like, Saejima, come on, man. P make up your mind. Okay, villain monologue. Mm, I, I guess in most cases, it's it's nice. You get to, you know, hear about them. Now, I'm trying to think of some... Like, some of them is just like, I don't care, dude. Shut the fuck up. But, um, for the most part, it's okay. What does chat think about this? Munakata. Oh my god, that cutscene before the uh, protags arrive in Yakuza 4. How long is that? It feels so long. <clears throat> it's fine. And yeah, you know what? I'm actually indifferent as well. Like, it could be good, could be boring, but the Jingu monologue in Asian is annoying. <laughs> I just hear Jingu's laugh. Oh, so you mean. No! Stream Deck! Oh my god, it's... It froze, dude. Can you work, please? Dude, <laughs> thank you, you're like... 10 minutes late, sheesh. Okay. Orphanage threatened. This one is a meme material for me as well. Um, feels wrong to put this in love. Okay, how many times does this happen? So, three? That, I mean, three is like the biggest case. I think they might have get... They might get threatened in five, but nothing happens, maybe. And now in Gaiden. Where a cat... Literally in the trailer. Oh, look at your orphanage. Do you care about them? Then listen up. <clears throat> um, oh, God. <laughs> okay, chat. Do we consider Park taking over the orphanage a threat? <laughs> if we do, that's fucking hilarious. Technically, in a, in a way, it is. That's so deep, bro. Um. Yes. Yeah. God damn it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Well. Okay. I. I mean. I mean. I'm glad to see all of you guys are just going. Yes, but. Uh, yeah, I guess most cases are like, no, well, let me put this in depends. The Yakuza 3 scene was really good. Like, that that was heart-wrenching. Uh, the one in Gaiden was just kind of funny to me because how many times has Kiryu gotten someone dear to him, like, threatened? And then, um, the one in 5, yeah, I, I don't, I just don't like how... Well, I mean... There's a whole can of worms here, dude. God damn it. But yeah, ultimately it depends. I don't mind it too much. Gaiden, though... Yeah, like, please don't. Though that's not... It's not Gaiden's fault so much as it's the writing, I guess. Oh, Kiryu comes back. Oh, how could we pressure him? Oh, threaten the orphanage again. <laughs> you know? It just comes off as cheap, like... But then again... I guess... Demand for a Kiryu game has been there, so here we go. Classic orphanage and loved ones th being threatened. It is... It comes with the territory. Um... Sad substar music. This is not a lie, by the way. Mandatory arena fight. Oh, this is... I think everybody loves this, right? 
My least favorite example is probably the one in Zero. It just feels very bland. But then the one in Yakuza 1 is probably my favorite. And then the one in Yakuza 2 is really good as well. Um, Yakuza... You could argue Yakuza 3 had one with Majima. And Yakuza 4 with uh, Ibrahimovic. Generally speaking, they're just really, really good. <coughs> Kiryu for getting moves. Why? <laughs> Why? Like, it depends on the game, but for the most part, it's just like... Really? And um, if you know me, my least favorite example is... Yakuza 2. The way you have to regain the moves in Yakuza 2 is so fucking stupid and tedious. I just hate it. Oh, you want to get the Tiger Drop back? Oh, well, you might have learned it in the last game, but... Okay, we want you to reach, like, Chapter 11. After you reach Chapter 11, beat the Tigers. And then I think you have to beat the Tigers in the tournament. And then go to the Acupuncturist, not Kamaki. Go to the Acupuncturist, have him massage your back, and there you go. You learn the Kamaki move again. Boom. <laughs> It's so stupid. I don't like it. I don't... See, I, I don't mind stuff like finding moves or, you know, stumbling upon people who teach you moves, but... That ain't it. That ain't it. <clears throat> um... But yeah, almost every time I want to look up how to get the tag drop in Yakuza 2 or Kiwami 2, I have to look at, at a guide and I hate it. Um... Anyway... Kiryu never kills. <laughs> it's... It's kind of funny, but... Eh. I don't really care for it too much. So, like... Sometimes it's funny, but for the most part, it's just there. The Majima fight. Now, we got this in... Yakuza 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... And 7. I love it. Like, most of the time, I love it. Uh, very good fights in one, especially original one. I, I'm not counting the Majima Everywhere fight because that's not story. And, you know, it's... it's You get what I mean. Yakuza 1, 2, 3... Just all around good fights, usually, with him. Um, if you want to count Kenzon and Ishin as well, yeah. Pretty good fights. Um... I'll take. Kiryu should have killed Iwami. I would have loved that. Okay. Mm. Nice, Silent King. Hell yeah. Useless police. Are we gonna mainly tag Date with this? <laughs> I feel bad for him, honestly. Like, he's, he's just a regular guy doing his best. Uh, what else do we have? Oh yeah, Yakuza 4. When Suguchi is in the warehouse. Like, he's just like, bye bitches, you can't touch me. Well, walks away. Tanimura's like, Sugu Sudo, what the hell are you doing? Shoot! <laughs> Ayabe. Yeah, Ayabe's cool. I love Ayabe, by the way, but... Um... I don't, like, I don't know. A Ayabe had a purpose, being the dirty cop. He fulfilled it well. I don't think that's the same... Police not showing up in three. <laughs> um, yeah, something else that's funny. When you think about how police don't stop street fights until judgment happens, and only judgment. I think Lost Judgment just took that away. Uh, it's it's whatever. I mean, it's annoying sometimes, but um. Characters disappearing, everybody's favorite. So, when we say characters disappearing, we're talking about... Um, Kaoru, just going who, God, God knows where. Um, Yayoi Dojima, just disappearing. Minami, where is he? The florist, what happened to him? Um, just all of these characters that, you know, you would love to see again, but just disappear. Shinada... Tanimura. Um, there was someone else at the tip of my tongue, but... <sighs> you could argue for some villains. Aizawa, Baba. Um, Kaoru is an 8, right? She's a summon. She might be in a sub-story. We'll see. But yeah. 
Now, having said that, the character's disappearing trope... I don't think a character has to return just for the sake of returning. So, for example... If Shinara comes back, what would they do with him? Do you want him in the story, or do you want him in a sub-story? Or a summon, maybe. I think smaller stuff like that is cool. But story, I mean, yeah, you could probably implement him fine, but... You know, what would you do with him? Same thing for Akiyama, by the way, in my opinion. People would love an Akiyama game, and I think Akiyama is really fun to play, don't get me wrong. But I just don't... It's hard to see a, an Akiyama game. He's not even a criminal to begin with. At least not in, not in the same way. Like, he gives these very shady tests to uh, his clients, but... <clears throat> do, 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 do. Yeah, see, seeing, uh, you know, characters and sub-stories would be awesome. But, yeah. Depends for the most part. I don't, like, I don't mind some characters not coming back, but... What would an Akiyama game even be about? Protecting Haruka again? <laughs> I don't know, like... It's hard to think about that. Mm. An Akiyama game set between 5 and 6 where he fights the Sayo. Hmm... Making a whole game based off of that would be tough, I think. Yakuza 5 was already struggling to give Akiyama a purpose. I agree with that. Some characters felt like they're just there to be there. Akiyama is probably the worst defender of that. Um, but, you know, for, for what it's worth, I enjoyed uh, seeing him in 5. Anyway, Bart and <laughs> Darius, oh my god. Watch this become a thing. It already kind of is. So, if you don't know... Now, again, there's spoilers in the title. But we're like at the end of this, but there's spoilers if you don't want to hear this. Yakuza 7 spoilers. Kashiwagi comes back as a bartender for your main hideout. And... Guess who's coming back in Yakuza 8 as a bartender as well? Richardson. Yeah, American man from Yakuza 3. He's gonna be a... a bartender in a Hawaiian bar. And that bar is probably gonna be a hideout, so... Uh, You know what? You know what? It's funny. But also, why the fuck do you bring all of these people back? Bruh. Revolve bar, yeah. Yakuza, 8, Yakuza 7 has survive bar. Yakuza 8 has revolve bar. Now, we, let's just wait and see what Yakuza 9 and 10 bring. When they said fly, they really meant it. True. <laughs> Fly bar. What, what is Nishki's bar gonna be called? Koi? Koi bar. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Someone at RGG loves Yakuza 3. They literally bring back people we didn't ask to be brought back. Uh, you know... I love Richardson, honestly. I think he's, like, one of my favorite villains in all of the series. He's goofy. He, you know, he, he's unique in that he's not a Japanese villain. I like that. Um, Kamaki. I wonder how you would fit Kamaki in here. But yeah, bartenders, it's funny. I like it for the most part. But... Should I put it in indifferent? No. Yeah, let me put it in indifferent, I guess. Um, or... Like, I I'm just really, really, really hoping they don't make it worse by actually just fucking making this a, tr a tradition. Like, bringing back all the dead characters at as bartenders. And boom! That's how we bring back everybody. Um, if they do that, I might take this to... Hate or dislike. But for the time being, whatever. Uh, anyway. Animal fights. Okay, I think people love this. <laughs> or most people do. So you have Saijima fighting a bear. Kiryu fighting tigers. 
Um, and I think there was another example. You can fight a bear in Yakuza 0 as well, but not in the story. Um, you can fight... Techni well, you don't fight an ape. You fight an ape, like, operating a, a crane in Yakuza 7. And then I think you fight... Oh yeah, the... Well, the bulls are not bosses, but yeah. They're a quick time event. Which is cool. Oh yeah, the shark in Yakuza 6. Um... Yeah, th there's a lot of animal fights, and usually they're pretty damn good. People love them. Okay, the last one. I just saw someone asking, what is this? Info dumps. <laughs> um... I guess depends. I mean, Tamiya would... Tamiya alone would go to the left here, but... For the most part... I, I think everybody prefers a... Show, don't tell approach. Um, one example of a plot, uh, or sorry, info dump that kind of overstayed its welcome is the one in Yakuza 7 at the homeless park when you interrogate that bleed Japan guy. I think that's definitely among the longest, pl uh, like, info dumps. And you, like, <laughs> it's very noticeable. Um, now, granted, yeah. It makes sense, or maybe it doesn't make sense, but it's just very long. I think it goes beyond half an hour, if I remember right. Now, Tamiya, people... Th we we thought this was the longest one, hands down. But if I remember correctly, when we played through Yakuza 3 sometime back, we actually counted this. It's 26 minutes. And it's not the longest info dump, believe it or not. But the Tamiya info dump got a place as the... <laughs> The info dump, I think, just because of like, like, it's probably one of the first info dumps that's like, oh, you just sit down in a place and boom, here's all this info. <clears throat> um, worst info dump is all of Yakuza Five. <laughs> what is the longest one? I I'm I can't say for sure right now, but again, the Blade Japan one in Yakuza Seven is very long. Uh. Kido, Yakuza 3 diet member. Yeah, you have a lot of info dumps and judgment as well. But if I remember right, they're not... All oh yeah, that wait, how long was the Halmoral one again? I don't remember. I can't remember if it's worse than the Yakuza 7 one or not, but... The Agent 3 meetup. Yeah, I don't remember, unfortunately, but... Generally speaking, I don't mind the info dumps, but... Um, I can see why people don't like them, or... You know, think they're they they're boring or they get boring eventually. Um, it's whatever, it depends. And yeah, that's it, fellas. The Yakuza Tropes tier list. I'm gonna be leaving the link for this in the description once I'm done with this stream. Uh, if you wanna give it a try, share it with your friends and just mess around and discuss. Oh, do we like crotch shots? I love crotch shots. Well, let me put this in love. Oh, what? You like crotch shots? Fuck you. It goes to hate tier for me. Um, this was a lot of fun. I had fun talking to you guys. Had fun just all of you brainstorming ideas for all of these. I'm not doing this one because it's basically the Majima Fight one. Where is it? This one. Like, it's, it's the same wavelength, really. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um... I love horny minigames, but I can't blame anyone for hating them. Yeah, you know, to each their own. This is just my take on this stuff. Uh, like, the, I usually say stuff like, oh, don't take this too seriously. It's just me. You're allowed to have your opinion. Your opinion is valid. Everybody's opinion is valid. But, you know, that doesn't stop comments sometimes from going, oh my fucking, how could you put this in S tier or D tier? It still happens. But that's just the nature of uh, tier lists. Um... And you'll see, if you make a tier list, you'll get comments saying that stuff. That's just the nature of these things. Anyway, this was a lot of fun, guys. Uh, remember, uh, in how many hours now? Five, seven hours-ish. We're gonna have an RGG stream. I'm gonna co-stream that. So, it could be something huge. It could be something... It could be Code Hangers Part 2. But yeah, that's gonna be awesome. So, look forward to that. This has been a lot of fun, guys. Have a great rest of the night, day, whatever time it is there. If you're gonna sleep, hope you have a wonderful sleep. And uh, yeah, this has been great, fellas. Anyway, 
until seven hours, fellas. Bye-bye now.